Anyway, go to John chapter 3 this morning. John chapter 3. I, I want to deal with a very important subject this morning. I'll, I'm going to read the passage of Scripture, then I'll tell you what I'm talking about. But it says in verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And this is why I want you to notice this verse. This verse is very important here. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I want you to think about that verse for a second. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Okay. Now we all know this story. We all know the story of Nicodemus. We all know the phrase about being born again. You know, that's talking about when a person gets saved, they are born again. We I've, I've preached on that many times before. And you know, we know the story. John three 16 is in this passage. One of the most well-known passages in all the Bible But that phrase right there, when Jesus says that which is born of the flesh is flesh, I think sometimes we go over that a little too quickly and we forget to focus on something. And uh, what what kind of inspired this message, we've all probably seen it on the news. You've seen the things about all the riots going on and all the protests. You know, they're taking down all these Confederate memorials in different places and you got the racial tension going on. And, uh, you know, racial tension has been pretty bad in America in the last several years, hasn't it? I mean, it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. And you know, when it comes to, you know, the racial problems in our country, I fully expect for things to continue to get worse because the way our government is with Darwinism being taught in the schools, um, that's only going to grow. Okay. As long as we're teaching uh, the religion of Darwinism, we will continue to see this type of, you know, tribal behavior go on in our country. But the problem, you know, I expect that kind of thing from the world. I really do. I expect the world to act like animals. I expect lost people to do what they do. I expect a bunch of lost, wicked leaders to make the kind of decisions that they are making. I I fully expect that. But, you know, I personally believe that one of the reasons things are so bad as far as racial tension in America, I believe that Christians have contributed to this problem. Because the truth is the actual solution to this type of thing can only be found in Christ. But I want to show you how I believe Christians are actually, we're, we're fueling the fire. There is teaching that is going on in churches and across Christianity, but Baptists are no exception to this. And listen, if I say some things that, you know, maybe, you know, you haven't heard this before and it, it, you know, don't let it freak you out too much. I'm going to give you a lot of Bible to prove And listen, and if it does really freak you out and you have a problem with it, you are allowed to talk to me about this and and let me explain more to you. But listen, I wouldn't preach something like this unless I was 110% sure that it's right. I, I wouldn't do that. I don't try to be offensive or anything like that. But listen, Jesus said very clearly in this passage, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. When it comes to people, listen, folks, we're just flesh, all right? There's nothing to it. And in and, and this church, we do not give a rip about a person's race, race, ethnicity, and we especially do not care about the pigmentation of somebody's skin. Those things absolutely do not matter. I, there was a lady one time when we had food pantry, she came through here and I invited her to church and everything, and she was like, She's like, well, if I come, I want to bring my grandkids. And she said, I I couldn't believe what she asked me. I don't know where this came from, you know, but she asked me this. She says, now my kids are, my grandkids are mixed race. Is that going to be okay for them to come? (laughs) And I said, yeah, that's fine. You know, I, I, I told her, I said, we do not care about that. That does not matter. And listen, As far as the world is concerned, as far as America is concerned, it's all about race anymore, isn't it? I mean, every time you watch the news, they're constantly shoving something about race down our throats. 
Whenever there's an election, it can't be one person got more votes than another. It's, you know, this percentage of white people voted for Donald Trump. This percentage of black people voted. Who cares about that? Well, our country's obsessed with it. Our country, in our country in America today, you can't even have a TV commercial where they don't make sure they have all the different races represented. I mean, people have protested magazines before. I remember there was a big controversy over a magazine because they had a, a picture of a bunch of teenage girls on it that were famous from Hollywood, and all of them were white, and everybody threw a huge fit. I mean, we're just, we're just obsessed with these things. And churches are getting, they're getting caught up into this stuff. And they'll even do things where they will celebrate a race or an ethnicity. Listen, we are never going to have Black History Month in this church. No, we're not going to have White History Month. We don't, we don't care about those things. When it comes to Christ, these things do not matter. You know why? Because these things are all about flesh and blood. And you know what? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 41, it says, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star deferreth from another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, raised in power. This is referring to our physical body, okay? It's sown in corruption. When we die, we're going to be put in the ground. It's being sown. It's like a seed being planted. It's being sown in corruption. It's being sown in dishonor. That's talking about our body. But when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to change us, we're going to see, and it'll be something good then. But listen, right now, all of us in here, physically speaking, we are nothing. We are corruptible. We are dishonorable. There is nothing good about our flesh. Our flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And we see in verse 44, it is sown a natural body, but it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, talking about Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Every, the, the natural comes before the spiritual. Every one of you in here today, you all have had a natural birth. Okay? The proof is that you're here. But the spiritual birth comes when you are born again, like Jesus talked about. Why do we need to be born again? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We have to have a spiritual body. That does not come until Christ's return, and that cannot happen to you unless you have been born again spiritually, unless you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. But the natural birth comes first. The spiritual birth comes later. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We don't have it yet. I don't care how much you changed your life when you got saved. You do not bear the image of the heavenly. You bear the image of the earthly right now. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. That has not happened yet, folks. You have not changed. You still have a dishonorable, corruptible, fleshly body that cannot, enter, that cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, that cannot inherit the kingdom of God. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. That does not happen until the return of Jesus Christ. And listen, this whole racial thing, it's all about bloodlines. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But when we start talking about race, we are talking about bloodlines. Now listen, as a church, we are physical people here, but we are, we are also people who have been born again. We are saved people. And we are not here today. We are not assembled together because of a bloodline, of a family relation. We are here because what we all have in common is a spiritual heritage. And that is Jesus Christ. We all have the same Father, Jesus Christ. A spiritual father. We have, we all have that, and that's what we have in common. And listen, race is all about bloodlines. They don't matter to God. God doesn't care about that. 
Though these things do not matter to him. It was God that said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Yet churches all across America today are helping make things worse by teaching this false doctrine, making a big deal about the Jews calling them chosen people because of their bloodline, because of where they physically descend from. Now, why would we do that? Why would we do that when the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Why would we do that when the Bible teaches that we're corruptible, that we all have bear, we bear the image of the earthy talking about Adam? Okay, Jews come from Adam too. Black people come from Adam. Chinese people come from Adam. We all come from Adam. And unless we are born again, folks, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We are all corruptible. It doesn't matter your bloodline. I'm going to show you several verses. God does not care about bloodline. And yet churches today, there are churches they're having that they, they have Israel Sunday. They will have an Israel Sunday where they will get Israeli flags that they will fly in their church. They will a lot of times try to find like a saved, a saved Jew. Okay. And listen, you know, if he's a saved Jew, he's saved just like us. All right. But they will, they'll make a big deal. Oh, this guy's of Jewish descent. You know, he used to be a Jew and he got saved and, you know, and he's a messianic Jew and they'll make a big deal about him. They'll have these prophecy preachers come in that all make a big deal about Israel and they will celebrate a physical people. And then they'll start talking about what God's going to do with the nation of Israel one of these days and how God's going to save them all and God's going to put them back in their land and the kingdom of God's coming that's for the physical nation of Israel. Really? Flesh and blood's going to inherit the kingdom of God? The Bible says that can't happen. Why are we making a big deal about that? Why does that matter, especially in a church? Listen, in our messed up country, I get our government doing these things. I get it when guys, bozos like Ted Cruz are out there saying stuff, you know, stand with Israel, stand with Israel. I get that when they do it, but why are pastors doing that? Why are churches making a big deal about that? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And what a lot of these people have done, because they'll see these verses, they have tried to separate the kingdom of God from the kingdom of heaven. Well, the kingdom of heaven is for the Jews. That's what they're teaching. That the kingdom of heaven is for the Jews. But listen, they're the same thing. And I'll prove it to you. I've got a bunch of verses I could use. I'm only going to show you a few. I don't want to beat a dead horse. But Matthew 19, 23 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven... And again, I say unto you that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Oh, notice how he said kingdom of heaven on one and a kingdom of God on another. They're clearly two different things. Well, listen, here's one way I can explain it real easy. Okay. It, now, I understand we don't have a king in America, but let's just say that, you know, we, did, we were a monarchy and Donald Trump was the king. It would, it would be appropriate to say, you know, that Donald Trump is, you know, we, or we could call America the kingdom of Trump or the kingdom of the USA. Okay. If it's the kingdom of Trump, well, why do we call it kingdom of Trump? Because his kingdom is the United States of America. Why do we call it the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, God, of heaven? Well, because God is the one who is over heaven. And so calling it the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, it's just like calling it the kingdom of Trump or the kingdom of USA or the kingdom of Kim Jong-un versus the uh, kingdom of North Korea or whatever the country. That's what that means. It's the same thing. And then look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Well, you don't have to turn. I'm going to go quickly to these. He says, verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And then in Luke 7, 28, where he's talking about the same thing, for verily I say to you, you, among these that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. <laughs> same quote, same thing. One gospel says kingdom of heaven. One says kingdom of God, because it's the same thing. Matthew 13, 11, he said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Talking about the, he's talking to the disciples, it's given to you to know. Why? Because they were believers in Christ, but it was not given to them talking about physical Jews. To know the kingdom of heaven. And then in verse, uh, Matthew, or Mark 4, 11, he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without are these things done in parables. So clearly they're the same thing. And listen, the Jews, they were the physical children 
but they had no faith. Therefore, they were thrust out of the kingdom of heaven and Gentiles who were of faith took their place. Turn over to Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. This is, this is very clear in the Bible. Look at Matthew 8, verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, And that followed, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. He's talking about the centurion, a Gentile. This man had great faith. And Jesus said, I can't find faith like this in Israel. And he said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You all see that? He's saying, hey, there's going to be people from all over, referring to the Gentiles that are going to come and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, men who are of faith in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, those who physically were a part of that kingdom, the Bible says they're going to be thrust out. You know why they got thrust out? Because they didn't have faith. They were never born again. You know why they were thrust out? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It didn't matter that their bloodline was one that was from Abraham. The Bible says they were cast out because they were only children of the flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. God does not look at any physical people in this world and say, they're special, they're chosen. But he does look at those who are of a spiritual line that comes from Jesus Christ. And we get that by faith and we are chosen. We are special. We see that the, the kingdom of God, it's something that's inside of us. Luke 17 verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say low here or low there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. How is the king? You know, it's all about that physical kingdom in Israel. We need to support Israel. We need to stand with Israel. We need to fight for Israel. We need to give them millions of our tax dollars every day so God will bless our nation. You know, we need to go and we need to give them military support and we need to bomb the Palestinians into oblivion and we need to, you know, kill all the Muslims around there because that land belongs to Israel. This is, this stuff's being preached, folks, in churches. Baptist preachers will get up and talk about bombing all the Muslims and killing all the Palestinians. I mean, Whatever happened to the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I don't want to get out of myself. That's coming later. But listen, they're making a huge deal about this kind of thing. And the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. No, we got to get that land. It's got to go back to Israel because Jesus Christ is going to set up a kingdom there one day that's going to go to the physical Jews. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They miss that. They don't see it. In Colossians 1.25, so the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. What's that talking about? Well, Colossians 1.25, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now listen, I can see where people read the Old Testament and maybe get the idea that it's about a physical people. But the Bible makes it very clear in Colossians that this was a mystery that was hid in the past ages. It was there, the truth was there, but it was a mystery that was hidden. But now it has been revealed to us and that is that mystery among the Gentiles, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know why the kingdom of God is within us? is because Christ is in us today. Spiritually speaking, Christ is within us and we are a part of the kingdom of God. We, we are the kingdom of God. Why? Because Christ is in us. Not because of a, you know, we have Abraham's blood flowing through our veins, but because we have Christ in us, because we are of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we are the kingdom of God, not because of anything special about us, but because of who is inside of us. And that is Christ. He is where the kingdom of God is all about. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so your background, your race, your former religion, all those things, you know, those things, you know, when it comes to your testimony, that can be an interesting story. You know, if you came from a Catholic background or a Buddhist background, and it's interesting to hear how people from false religions, uh, you know, receive the gospel. 
That's always exciting to hear that. But you all understand in the end, you got saved just like everybody else got saved. And you are now a part of the same body that we are all a part of. No matter what you look like, no matter what your background is, those things, they do not matter. None of it gives you special status. If you are of Jewish descent and you got saved, you're not double chosen. Okay, you're just as chosen as anybody else because you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Paul, we see the apostle Paul, he wasn't interested in anything about these people's background. Jews and Greeks all get saved by the gospel. He turn over to first Corinthians two. He didn't care who he didn't even care who led them to the Lord. The only thing that mattered was Jesus. He says in in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, he says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay, now what was the context of that? Well, if you go back in the chapter before, in chapter 1, in verse 11, he says, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. There was divisions in the church because there were people who maybe they got led to the Lord by different people. You know what Paul said? Who cares? That those things don't matter. Is Christ divided? Listen, if you're saved today, it doesn't matter who led you to the Lord. I mean, that's great. I'm thankful for the one you know, who led me to the Lord. It's okay for you to be thankful. But you all understand that you do not have a different status based on who brought you to Christ. Some of you were led to the Lord by me. That does not give you a special place in heaven and in Christ. might give you a special place with me, but at the same time with Christ, that, that does not matter. Those things mean nothing. But then, and then verse 21, he said, For after the wisdom of God by the world, by wisdom, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we cre- preach Christ crucified, and the Jews a stumbling block, and the Greeks foolishness. But of them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We see here that, you know, Jews and Greeks, they kind of look at things in different ways. And listen, different countries, different cultures, different races, for lack of a better term, they sometimes see things different. We have our differences, okay? Listen, I'm one of the most politically incorrect people in the world. I love a good ethnic joke. I think it's great. If you know some white jokes, I'd like to hear it. I think that's funny. All right. I, I have no problem with cutting up about that stuff. I don't think we ought to get all, uh, you know, I, I'm not a politically correct person. Okay. But understand while we do all have our differences, while we might have different things that we enjoy, different things that we celebrate, different foods that we eat, whatever. In the end, the God, it, we all follow the same gospel, don't we? We all get saved by the same gospel. And listen, as a, you know what? I have no problem with other races, cultures, whatever you want to call them, celebrating their heritage. I have no problem with if Americans want to celebrate 4th of July, I've got no problem with that. If Mexicans want to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, I've got no problem with that. If Southerners want to celebrate their Southern pride, I've got no problem with that. That does not bother me one bit. But you all understand that has no place in the church. Because in the church, it this has nothing to do with that. Those things that they're celebrating, you know, it's okay to be thankful for your country. I'm thankful that I live in America and I don't live in Iran or North Korea or Canada even. I'm thankful that I live in this country. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. If you want to wear an American flag shirt or something like that, that's fine. But you all understand when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to the things of God, what we're all about, those things mean nothing. They absolutely do not matter at all. If somebody wants to come and be a part of this church, I don't care if they're not even a citizen of the United States. They can come to this church. They can be a member of this church. Listen, as long as you're here legally, you don't have to be a citizen. We don't want, you, we don't want to cause trouble with the law or anything like that. You know, even if they're illegal, the government doesn't do anything about it. So if they're not worried about it, I'm not worried about it. If an illegal immigrant wants to come to this church, they can come, all right? If, you know, if they come after them, you know, we're not going to let them hide out in here you know, and, and fight the government on that. But at the same time, I would have no problem with an illegal immigrant coming and being a part of this church. You know why? Because this isn't about America, folks. This is about Jesus Christ. And so there are, when it comes to Christ, you know, there are no borders. There's no colors. It's not about bloodlines. And yet Christians today... I mean, they all want to go fight for the Jews. 
They all want to lift up the Jews, celebrate the Jews. Well, listen, for you to lift up one race, you got to pull the other races down. Well, isn't that what's going on in America right now? Now, why, why would people think that's even possible? Because they're not being taught the truth of the Scripture. They're being taught that Darwinianism and stuff. And, it's, and we, need, we need to realize just how foolish that is and how wicked that is. And it has no place in a church. We are not gonna, we're not going to celebrate any ethnicity here. The closest thing we have ever done to that and ever will do, and we might even do it again, you know, we've had one fellowship where we did me- Mexican food. All right? But you all understand that had nothing to do with a religious practice. That just had to do with eating. All right? And that's a completely carnal thing that we just happened to have to do to survive. But there was no religious significance in what we were doing that day. And we might do something like that again, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, as long as we don't make it some type of you know, religious sacrament or something. That, that's ridiculous. But our world, they're obsessed with race, gender. But you know, when it comes to Christ, those things don't matter. Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Folks, it doesn't get any clearer than that right there. Yet these same people in churches, you know what they're doing? You know how they'll spend that? Well, that's for right now. But one of these days after Jesus raptures us out, he's going to go back to dealing with Israel, a physical people. He's going to go back to dealing with a bloodline. And he's going to get ready to set up a physical kingdom for them. The kingdom of heaven and the gospel of the kingdom is going to get preached again, which they say is another gospel. But listen, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So why would God come back and start with the physical? Are all of a sudden now bloodlines going to matter when they don't matter now? All of a sudden they're going to matter. All of a sudden God's just going to change his mind. All, are Jews not corruptible? Do we think that highly of them that we don't think they're corruptible? Listen, they die just like we do. And when they die, their corpses rot just like our corpses rot. You know why? Because they're sinners too. They're made out of the same stuff that we are. They have the same blood flowing through their veins. And it's not so much it's the blood of Abraham, it's the blood of Adam. And we've all got it. And we're all sinners because of that. And listen, we have no, it, it is foolish for us to lift these people up. I'm not going to pull them down just because they're Jews. All right? If my problem with them is their religion. They deny that Jesus is the Christ. They, that, they're antichrist. The Bible makes it very clear that they are antichrist. That's my problem with them. It's what they teach. It's their religion. It's not their bloodline. I don't care about that. Those things, those things don't matter. It's what they teach. If they would get saved, they would be just as saved as I would be. And they would be just as much a part of God as I am. But listen, you know, Hollywood, the news media, their obsession with race, you know, the stupidity of the, you know, the, uh, the Bible, there was a Bible series they made a while back. I watched some of it. I forgot what it was called. And, you know, when you, you're going through the Old Testament, most of your characters need to be Jewish, all right? You know, if you're going to do it accurately. And if you're going to have other races in there, they're usually going to be bad people, all right? Well, that's politically incorrect. You're not supposed to do that. And on that stupid Bible series, they got to the story of Samson, and all of a sudden, Samson's black. You know, they got to make Samson. And then, well, I mean, we got to have some Asian people in there. So in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know when the angels came to get Lot out of the city. Remember the story where the angels smite the men of Sodom with blindness? Well, first of all, the angels didn't smite them with blindness. One of them was a like an Asian, uh, Asian angel, and he didn't smite with blindness. You know what he did? He pulled out his, his swords out and went all ninja on them. <laughs> now, that made way better TV, but that is not what happened. The Bible said they smote them with blindness, but no, we got to figure out how way to get you know, Asians in here somehow. So they made an Asian ninja angel. I mean, folks, that is so stupid. And I talk, I've talked to people, too, who are Christians. They'll talk about these, and oh, that was so biblical. It was so accurate. Really? A samurai angel? Are you kidding me? That's, that's so foolish. But let, I expect that kind of behavior from our government and from Hollywood. I expect it from, but I don't expect it from churches. And, you know, it's like America's history of slavery and our treatment of the Native Americans. You know, it's, we've been consumed with white guilt. 
And you know what? You know, Christians have pretty much always gone along with America when it comes to these things. You know, when it came to slavery, whatever, you know, killing the Indians, whatever. But it's like Christians today, we're trying to make up for that history by just going nuts over the Jews, lifting up the Jews. Folks, it's that attitude that there's differences, you know, between the races and stuff that has got us into this mess. If we would realize that, listen, as long there's always going to be different ethnicities, different tribes, different customs, different cultures. But what's going to bring us together is Jesus Christ. That's it. And maybe we wouldn't get so obsessed with these things. We'd start giving out the gospel more. But church today, they're having Israel Sundays. Well, you know what? Every Sunday here is Israel Sunday. Every Sunday here is Israel Sunday. And you know why? Because every Sunday our church is full of Jews. What? Well, Romans 2.28... I'm glad you brought that up for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Do you know, we get called anti-Semitic for saying stuff like that. Well, you're anti-Semitic because we don't think the Jews are the greatest because of their bloodline. When flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, he says, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. You do that. You get in enough trouble. If you tell Bruce Jenner, he's not a woman, you'll get in a lot of trouble. But you know what? That's one thing. I understand the perverted world get messed up, but you'll get in bigger trouble from Christians. If you point out a Jew, you know, Rabbi Yosef Khan or something and say, he's not a Jew. How dare you look at his beard? Look at his nose. I mean, he's a Jew. There's no doubt about that. He's a Jew. No, he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. That's what the Bible says. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. So guess what? If we want to celebrate our Jewishness, which is fine. Well, we don't get to celebrate ourselves. We celebrate God. He gets the glory for that. He did that for us. And folks, it doesn't get any clearer than that. That is as plain as the nose on Rabbi Khan's... No, that's not a plain nose he's got on his face, if you you know who that guy is. Plain as the nose on your face. It's it's that clear. But churches today, they're they're even raising money to help the physical nation of Israel and their military. I've gotten emails from Baptist preachers trying to raise money for a military to help buy them weapons, to help buy them body armor, because we got to bless the Jews if we're going to receive it. But the Bible says, you know, the blessing of Abraham, it, it comes on those who are of faith. We have that. Galatians teaches, I don't have time to go into all those scriptures, but you know, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Why would we as a church come together and try to raise money to buy physical weapons to kill people? Why would we do that? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Why would we take missions money that is supposed to be spent on spreading the gospel and buy physical weapons that are just going to kill people and send them to hell? Why would we do that? Ephesians 2 verse 11 says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles, I used to be a Gentile, in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, those in the flesh, circumcision in the flesh, talking about the Jews. They were Jews only in the flesh. That at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We used to be separate from Israel because we were without Christ in the past. But, and it says, and strangers from the covenants of promise and having no hope and without God in the world. I heard a preacher the other day say, you know, the covenants are for the Jews. The covenants are for Israel. You know, the covenants aren't for us. They didn't used to be, but now through Christ, they are for us. Those are our covenants. He made those with us. But now uh, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments containing an ordinances for to make of himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, 
and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Folks, we are, we are Israel now. God has made us that way. Not because of our physical bloodline, but because of his blood. The bloodline that's important that I have is not my physical bloodline, but the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And we, we don't, we don't have, you know, in the Old Testament, there was a separation that was there because of bloodlines. But it said in Ephesians, God abolished that. That is gone. We, and and he's, he's never going back to that. Okay? These people are saying, oh, we're going to go back to the Old Testament economy. That's garbage. You won't find that anywhere in the Bible. That is a man-made theological term that they have come up with to help advance this foolish Zionist teaching. It's garbage. There was, and, and, you know, in heaven, there's going to be people of every nation. I believe in every, every color. Revelation 7, 9, I heard somebody say, you know, we're all going to look like, you know, we'll all look like Jews in heaven. They said, I heard people say, they believe that black people are going to, can get saved and go to heaven, but they won't be black when they get in heaven. And it's a long story why they go into that, and it's a bunch of garbage too. But listen, in Revelation 7, verse 9, it says, And after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. How did he know they were from all over the world when they were all wearing the same thing? He could tell by looking at them. He could tell by their faces what, that they were from all over the world. What was it that made them that way? You know, because they were, they were clothed in white. Why they got those garments? Because they were washed in the blood of the Lamb. They got saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And the Bible never uses words like race. You know, we'll talk about tri kindred, tribe, and all that stuff. But, you know, and I, I'm not even going to take the time to show you the verse in the Bible that show, that proves that we all came from Adam. But listen, no one is getting special treatment of God because of a, a physical lineage. Romans 11, 32 says, For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, talking about the Jews, that he might have mercy upon all. God deals with the Jews today the exact same way he deals with every other race. There is no difference. And we shouldn't give anyone special treatment because of the color of their skin, whether our intention be to pull them down or lift them up. We're not going to do that. We're not going to make black people look pathetic by trying to lift them up. Why, why do they need us to lift them up? Uh, don't we think, believe we're all the same in Christ? Why do we need to celebrate that? Why do we need to focus special attention on that? We're not going to do that. That is, it, may, it makes it look weak. These people that are doing that, shoving it down our throats, it makes these other races look bad when they do that. Listen, I could care, you know, I could care less if I'm represented on a commercial. You know, you know if they want to make a commercial and I have any white people on, I'm not going to get offended. I don't care. I don't need to be, you know, in... I refuse to associate myself and just, you know, find myself by a, all white people. I don't know if you all know this, but white people can be pretty stupid. I mean, there's some pretty pathetic white people out there, all right? If you don't believe me, you know, just go look, all right? They're all over the place. People that I'm embarrassed by, you know, I don't associate myself with them. I, I don't care. You know, don't you dare, you know, just put me in with, all, with a, a color, all right? That's just, that's garbage, but we shouldn't be prejudiced. You know, by James 2, 1, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. And so, you know, we're not going to do that. And there is, there's nothing wrong. If you want to celebrate your, you know, what you come from, you know, if you're of Irish heritage or whatever, you know, go ahead and do it. If you want to wear green on St. Patrick's Day, you're not going to offend me. But you know what? We're not going to have green Sunday here at church or whatever you want to call it on St. Patrick's Day. Even though St. Patrick, I've been told, is actually a Baptist. Maybe we should celebrate that. But no. It's about Jesus Christ. It's not about that. We're not going to do that. You know, those things don't matter. In Christ, there are no ethnicities. There are no other nations. The only nation that matters is the true Israel of God. And those who are a part of that nation are those who are in Christ. And racial tension, it will never go away in this world. And it will never go away in America as long as we let the government, the news media, and the religion of Darwinism dominate our culture. It's going to keep on getting worse. Only the, the Bible teaches the true way to find unity, and that is through Jesus Christ. He makes us all of one. And if we want to help this at all, we need to spread the gospel. We're not going to celebrate ethnicities. We're not going to make differences. These things do not matter. They have no place. 
Whether, they have absolutely no place. Celebrating a physical nation of Israel and Jewish people, it has no place in the church. If you want to do that, if you want to send your money to Israel, you know what? It's your money. You can do whatever you want. You can flush it down the toilet if you want to. And that's what you'd be doing. Send it over there. But listen, we're not going to take up an offering for them. Now, we might take up an offering for a missionary who's going to go give the gospel to them, who preaches the truth of the gospel, because that will help spiritually. That will make them a part of us. But understand, we've got to get this. Churches need to get back to teaching this so we can actually maybe make a difference in this country and things will quit going downhill. But I do. I believe churches are making it worse by elevating a race of people. And we're not going to do that. It has no place in any church and it will have no place in this church. And so with that, let's all stand together.